Hey, golfers, and welcome back to another episode of the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. Um, today, we have a very, very special guest. Um, I think by now, one of the most accomplished golfers in the history of U of Minnesota women's golf has to be up there. Uh, Bella McCauley is with us. If you haven't been following, uh, well, for one, she's been on our YouTube channel several times. So um, if you've been following our channel, you're familiar with who Bella is and you know, how good of a player she is. But um, if you've been following the Gophers this spring, she's had she's had quite a run here of golf lately. So um, first of all, Bella, thank you for taking the time today and joining. Um, we've got some fun highlights to go over here. But first, just how are things since the season's been been wrapped up here? Well, thank you first for having me. It's always an honor to be a part of you guys here on the channel. Uh, it's been a crazy couple of months, to be honest. You know, uh, the spring season kind of comes in a flash, and we mm -hmm. start in February, and it just runs all the way through uh, mid-May. So just a lot going on, but towards the end is really when – you know, the big time is and it's it, it goes super fast and it's kind of just a whirlwind. But it's been really cool these past couple of weeks just being able to process everything that's happened and um just dream come true is an understatement. Um being able to win big tens and qualify for nationals a second time in a row is just there's really no words for it. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, because the way the NCAA kind of golf uh, it, it is structured is that it's very, very difficult to make it to the national championship as yeah. an individual. Yes. Uh, they, you know, there's sort of a big time bonus, I guess, if you're, you know, on, the, on one of the teams that makes it there, right? But um, I got, I mean, and the way that you've done these things is just by absolutely killing it in the final round. <laughs> and so I have to, I have, I have the stuff in front of me and I'm going to make sure I get it all hundred percent correct here. Okay. So this is kind of the summary, the last, you know, month maybe of golf for Bella. So in the big 10 championship shot a 64 in the final round. Yo. Is that eight under par? Yes. Eight under par to earn a share of the big 10 title individual title uh so that qualified her then to go to uh the regionals right for ncaa um shot a 65 in that final round to finish runner up for the whole event um, yep. which also then qualified you as an individual yep. to play in the national championship and so that was your second straight year then competing in the national championship which i thought i saw i looked at i was reading on the uh university of minnesota website that it was you're the first gopher to do that since Oh, it was like 87 or 88 or something like that. Yeah. So it's been 30 plus years, more than 30 years since a gopher has played in the national championship back to back years. So um, I know I kind of just asked you this, but like, how do you, I mean, do you, do you think about that stuff? Do you process like the history factor of things? And then we can also talk about scoring average and all those things right now. Your scoring average, I think I saw is the lowest in the history of the, of the program. So do you process any of that or think about that stuff or is it just is that on kind of the back burner? You know, I have heard some of these statistics and it really shocks me. It's not something that I normally just think through and process because until afterwards, you know, and and it's very shocking. But in the moment, it's just you're playing you're playing against yourself, really. And yeah. I feel like that's what golf is. And I'm just trying to play my best each and every day. <laughs> and so that's not normally something that's in my head. But thinking back on it, it really is crazy. You know, um, just kind of some backstory for the national championship. About two, two years ago, they changed the format of it to allow more teams into the NCAAs. And so there's only six individuals in the entire country that qualify mm -hmm. for the national championship. So there's 30 teams, six individuals, one individual from each regional site. And so the thought process as an individual going into it is really, you know, I have to have a really special tournament, basically roughly top five to make it. And, you know, there's actually been a little bit of, uh, discussion about whether that's fair or not. Yeah. You know, I think it's it's cool for the teams, it ob but it obviously makes it really difficult for individuals to get in, and it almost makes it feel like if you are an individual and a team and your team doesn't go as good as you might be, it's it's almost yeah. impossible. To so I get imagine in. there's a ton of really good individuals that their Absolutely. team might not have quite been at that upper echelon of making it to the national championship yep. that are being left out and you know, you were able to just sneak past some of those individuals, but it has to be, I, there's probably that feeling uh, in a sense among a lot of those golfers that it's kind of working against them. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, there's, I think it ends up being about 40 to 50. I forget the exact number of people that don't go as a team and that are all vying for one spot Yeah. at each regional wow. site. And so just, you know, 
that's a two, three percent odds and everyone's, you know, the best in the country. So it's it's very it's very difficult. And to be able to do it twice. I mean, I just I feel honored, um, you know, it, it's the dreams you think about as a kid. And so I I haven't I still don't think it's fully sunk in yet over these, but it is slowly. And it's yeah. been just such a cool such a cool way to end the season. So when you're at these you qualify for these regionals and you're do you go into it looking at kind of the leaderboard and the participants and you're like, okay, these are the individuals that I need to beat? Or are you not even, does that not even cross your mind? Are you like, I, I'm trying to kind of get the sort of the, your mentality going into these big events because there's something that clearly works for you. I just, I'm just curious on what is going through your, like, are you thinking about these other players? Are you just like, I'm playing my game. I'm working on my shot. Um, whatever they shoot, I can't, and I, I'm not worried about it. Yeah, I'm more that mentality where I don't even think about really who's in the tournament. I swear, I don't even know who was all in the tournament till I got there, showed up, started playing. I was like, oh, they're in here. And I, you know, I think I think it's important when you're entering any sort of golf round, at least for me, everyone's very different, but at least for me, it's important that I don't put too much pressure on who I'm playing against, trying to beat. I mean, at the end of the day, even though you're trying to beat out some other players, you're really just trying to put down some good rounds for yourself and put down a good tournament. You know, you could shoot, you could play not good for yourself and still win, or you could play lights out, you know, shoot a couple 65s and someone still beats you out. You know, that's just the game of golf. So I think in the moment, you just have to focus on yourself and what you can control. My coach talked a lot about that and just um, controlling what you can can control. And that's just putting one step in front of the other and trying to make another good shot. And so that's just really what I try to do in all my tournaments this spring and just enjoy the process. Um, it gets to be a long season. So towards the end, you're just really grinding it out and trying to, to to play the best round you can in that very moment and not thinking too much about the leaderboards or what's yeah. what else is happening. So is that, that has to be kind of, kind of, I was going to lead into talking about a sort of, if you have like a comfort level, so to speak, in playing from behind essentially, because these the last couple of events where you've had a really, really good final round and kind of vaulted up the leaderboard to the top, is there going into those final rounds, let's say you're, I, I don't know exactly what it was, but you know, you're five, six, seven shots back from the top. Um, yeah. And you're, you know, you have to go really low to catch up. Are you thinking about that going into your final round? Like you, are you thinking about, all right, today I got to shoot 65. I got to shoot 64 today, or I got to put something really low up there today and make a bunch of birdies or again, or, or is it the kind of the same thing where you're just like, here's, the first hole, here's my first tee shot. I'm worried about that first. Yeah, not at all. I'm way more just in enjoying the process. I'm not even thinking. I mean, going into Big Tens, there's four out of the six of us there are graduating. And so I'm really actually just thinking about them. And this is mm. could be their last round of competitive golf ever. And it was just kind of like a really weird emotion, like emotional moment for the rest of the team. And so I was really focusing on them. Um, same at regionals. I wasn't really thinking about qualifying or anything like that. It really wasn't in the back of my mind. I knew a rough number actually at regionals. I knew I needed to play really, 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 really good that last round. But it's really not in the back of my, it's not really in my mind as I'm going out and trying to play. And I think once I got both of those last rounds, once I got started and realized how you know, how I was feeling that day with, with the game and um, made some really good birdies early on and just felt like I can't miss a shot. Yeah. Like I know I'm going to be hitting it close on almost every single shot. I'm feeling really good over the over the ball for putts. Um, the whole looks super big to me. I'm like, OK, I know yeah. it's going to be that's when I know it's going to be a good round is once I get going. But I really don't know until I'm like nine holes in. Yeah. Is it, <laughs> so, is it, you know, you hear golfers talk about being in the zone. Yes. Is that, would, is that exactly how you would describe totally. it? Totally. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the thing in all competitive sports too. Um, anyone can attest to that is just, you kind of just enter a different mode, so to speak. And I don't know what it's like in other sports, but in golf, you just really zone out and you, you know, you just can't miss a shot. It's the, the feeling of comfortability over the golf ball is absurd and oh. I just feel like I can't miss a shot can't miss a putt I'm comfortable over everything it's crazy it's just a really it weird feeling sounds like a really cool I mean it sounds like something I've never experienced <laughs> but it sounds it sounds like that it sounds exactly like what you hear 
LPGA Tour pros or PGA Tour pros talk about yeah. when they go, you know, you hear those golfers that go out and shoot 62, 63 yeah. and to start a tournament and, you know, you get, they get asked those questions by the media and that's, it's almost exactly what they say. You know, there's a certain weird extra level of yeah. comfort or confidence over the ball. And absolutely, obviously you found that in the perfect time with those yeah. two rounds. Cause is there, cause I, and I feel like I've been, you know, you know, again, following some of your scores in your career a little bit, is there maybe something to like for you as well, getting into a tournament, a couple of round, maybe a round or two, and then you're kind of comfortable with the course, comfortable with your game a little bit where you maybe, I guess I don't have a, a stat in front of me, but um, it, I don't know, maybe it seems like rounds two, three, four are a little bit lower than the others. You know, I think it varies at each course and obviously each tournament. I've gotten asked a lot. I really don't have a different mentality going into the last round or anything like that. I think it's more coincidence that the final rounds at Big Tens and Regionals have yeah. been so good. But I will say, once you get going and there is a certain level of comfortability, you know, being further back and having to jump up on the leaderboard rather than hold that, there's, there's definitely different levels of pressure there. You know, when you're leading the tournament by a lot and you're going to the last day, that's almost more pressure in my yeah. personal opinion. They're both very different feelings. Um, I've had both and, you know, um, I think there is a level of comfortability coming from behind. And, um, but both final rounds, I towards, kind of to answer your question, your last question, um, towards, I would say hole 12, 13, that's okay. when I kind of knew. And yeah. then the pressure started kicking in a little bit more of like, okay, now you have to step it up and you know you're close and you're within striking distance. And that's when, um, that's when you kind of, that's when like more of the pressure yeah. starts kicking in and you start realizing where you're at and all of that, all of those emotions. Okay. But Cause I was going to ask, I mean, at some point there's a, there has to be, yes. whether it's from a coach or, you know, I don't know, yes. a teammate, however you guys communicate out there where you kind of get that message like, okay, you're in the mix a little bit Absolutely. here and you have a chance. Yeah. So I, I guess, well, and then also I saw, was it at, do you have, is, it a, is there a caddy that you can have at the regionals or how does that work? Because I saw, I think I saw your coach was there too. So how yeah. does that work and how much communication is there between you and the coach during these yeah. high pressure moments? For sure. So our caddy, if you will, in college events, our coaches, they're the only ones that can give us advice um, in, in, okay. in, in a college event. But my coach, our coaches do a really good job of just handling each individual person and what they need on the golf course and everything. I'm a pretty independent player, I would say. There's definitely times I've asked them where, hey, what do you think in here? Um, this seemed a little different yesterday. Or they, they came up to me in my final round at, at Auburn and regionals, and there was a hole that was playing ridiculously hard. They had just really tricked up the pin, and people didn't, like, see it right that didn't see like the fall off and they mentioned it to me before I had I hit my shot into the green they're like hey just so you know this is how it's playing and that's a helpful so they'll mention things like that but most of the time I just kind of do my own thing and um heading into reg in regionals in my last round after 15 I asked my coach I kind of wait till like towards the end yeah. and I'm like hey what do I need to be at and she goes okay you're one back we obviously have three to go but the leader that you're that's is actually already in the clubhouse and so it's just you out here and I'm like okay so I know what I need to do birdie 16 par 17 and actually going into 18 I told I looked at my coach my assistant coach Matt and I said hey I hate playoffs like I hate <laughs> playoffs like that is the worst feeling it's not a good feeling it's just there's the pressure's heightened if whatever pressure was there it's heightened times 10 and I said I hate it and he goes well do something about it then and I was like okay um I and I birdied the last hole in yeah. like crazy fashion made a 25 footer um just uh, really surreal so I think there is something from coming from behind and just um it, it's weird because it's not like I have a different mentality but heading into the final holes I do know how to kick it up a gear um, kick it up a notch if you will and mm -hmm. when I see the number in sight and know what I need to do sometimes I can do yeah. that you get the just even like hearing you talk about it there's certainly you know you have obviously all the, the talent and the swing and the mechanics everything is all down right but there's certainly you get to this level and then the the separator seems to be that that mentality part. for sure um, I think you know you you know you can go out there and shoot 72 73s all you know you could do that in your sleep right but then there's 
to go low in a crucial moment, you know, there's a certain comfort that you have with that clearly that you've, yeah. I'm sure it's a ton of competitive experience before, obviously. Uh, but that seems to be just based on what you what I'm hearing from you and obviously the communication with the coaches and everything, they seem to have up, utmost confidence in you and just going to you say, Hey, here's what you need to do yeah. to get to a certain number or here's, here's where the mark is, you know, how, what are you going to do about it? As this other yeah. coach said, you know, like you can go figure it out. Um, and it's funny. Cause I, I saw, I've, I've got the video or I've seen the video. Have you seen the video of your putt yet? I have. No? It's, it's yeah. one of my, that's one of my best yeah. golf memories. Yeah. So, um, and you know, we'll, we'll show it here as we're talking about it, but you talk, you said 25 foot putt. Um, so, you know, at that moment you have to make it to, yeah. to avoid a playoff. Yes. But if you miss it, you probably go to a playoff. Is that what you knew at the time? Yes. Okay. Uh, so are you, are you thinking like going like, cause I, I'm as an amateur golfer, I'm thinking like, don't leave it short in that scenario. Cause I want to <laughs> give it a chance. Is that something you're thinking? You're probably too far in the zone where you're just like, I already know the speed of this putt. I mean, I don't know. I was really thinking, you know, it was downhill breaking left to right. So not the most comfortable I most of the time you're ever over a left or right or, you know, and, but I was, I was in the zone and I was kind of like, all right, let's keep it close, have good speed. But I just had a really good feeling about this, about this read. And so I just, when I hit it, I mean, it was like seven feet from the hole and I knew it was going in. Um, wow. It's just so, it's a really weird zone that you can get in as a, as a golfer. It's, it's crazy, but it's uh yeah it's it's really surreal it was in my mind i'm like i don't want to three putt this like that would be a really bad move <laughs> but yeah. i i was so comfortable over the putt that it just yeah, it didn't feel is, like that was a possibility that is exactly where my mind would go in that scenario i would be like <laughs> instead of trying to make it i'd say let's just not three putt this let's just um, not three putt it. did you did you think about what you what the hopes and dreams that you crushed of the person that didn't get to go in the playoff with you <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> that's probably I, I a do weird feel, question to ask but i just no, thought about that i now. do feel bad i well but i will say it would have been worse in a playoff i think for either one of us just because if you had lost is yes that yeah, or even true. or if she had lost in that or if i had lost in that i mean that's just a worse feeling i would have rather at least if i was in her position i would have rather lost that way <laughs> just because you know it's still the tournament mode you lose or win fair and square and it's not like it's just one yeah like a bad like break in a weird anticlimactic yeah. one hole kind of thing and so even the rules officials actually came up to me and they were just like you know we love both of you guys and we're so happy for you bell but we're just really glad we didn't have to do a playoff because it's just so weird for everyone i suppose they gotta figure <laughs> out a know? hole to go to and all this stuff and yeah yeah i suppose that that is another complication to it so um so did that other yeah. player become like an alternate then for is that how that would work or i don't i don't know how I don't everything even goes know how it works i mean i don't think it's really an option you're just going yeah i mean <laughs> like i suppose going. most of the time people are gonna but go yeah, if, they if, get, if they qualify. like if something were to really happen i'm sure she would have been yeah. alternate yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Interesting. But yeah, that's like I was, like I said before, and it's just it's it's cool to hear the I guess what was going on between the ears for you the yeah. whole time. You know, you're you know what you got to get to. You're you're trying to make birdies. You're trying to make the 25 footer instead of not three putting, which is something that I again I think most amateurs would would if they were being honest is, is what they would be trying to do. So, uh, I mean, awesome to hear that, and it's really cool for for us here at second swing as such, you know, we, as such kind of supporters and, and fans of the Gophers to kind of follow this. And, um, I don't know how, you know, if you, I mean, then chatting with, you know, Aaron Roth, your club fitter, right. Yeah. Um, he's, he was so excited about it and we were, we were following along kind of through the text message and stuff. And oh, so he was so pumped nice. about that. Um, so kind of on that note too, I, I wanted to ask, you know, we are a golf equipment company and Aaron's been working with you for a while. Um, is there, is there a club or clubs in the bag that you kind of are the most, is the most confident in or you just, you know, it doesn't really matter what it is. You're just, you're going up there with the same confidence on all 14 of them. I would just say I love my putter. Like okay. I love my putter. Yeah. It's, it's, um, I've actually had it in the bag for almost 10 years. And then I remember you that, mentioning this to me. Yes. Yeah. And then before that it was my dad's for like 10 years. I mean, this thing's old. This thing's like an old yeah. Scotty. Yeah. It's seen so it's Newport seen, kind of blade style. Right? Yes. Yeah. It's a Newport blade style. I mean, this thing's old. It's got on the, 
um, back side, not the, the face, but on the back side, it's got so many bumps and scratches. I mean, <laughs> it's just seen a lot of wear and tear, but I love that thing. And I know when I'm putting bad, it is not the putter's fault. Like, I've, it's never really once crossed my mind, at least recently. Yeah. Like, if I'm putting bad, I'm like, it's. I know it's just I got to figure something out because it's not the putter. So the amount of confidence I have in that thing is insane. And when I'm putting good, I it's cra- like it gets crazy. Like I just yeah. know I I can see the whole everything's going in. I feel like everything is going to drop you, in. Have you ever made any sort of tweak to that at all, or has it just been here? Here's what it looks like. No, I love what it looks like, no. and it just works. Yeah, for I I've never. Um, I mean, certain times I've gone through definitely some putting yips or yeah. you know pads. I think everyone does. Yeah. But um, and then you know just working through that and working through some different like. Um, putting just work tuning fine tuning it and everything but not any really big major things actually a couple years like once i in high school i tried to switch over to a a mallet just to like see if things would be different and i hated it went back immediately um completely regretted that so i love that club i would also just say i i really love all my clubs in my bag but um it it really depends on the day too like I can feel some days I just feel really confident with a seven iron and other days it's driver and every day it's just really different. And so yeah. I would say I, while like I want to put that out there too, I mean, it's not just some people think, oh, you know, that's I just need to get better and stuff. But sometimes it just happens. You know, it's life. We're not robots. So each day is going to feel a little bit different um, holding a club in your hand and giving yourself grace there. Um if I have to pick one other club, probably my hybrids. Like I yeah. love my hybrids. I feel I feel like I can step up over a hybrid and be yeah. like, this thing is gonna be on the green, like, like nine times out of ten. Yeah, I mean that's got to be a tremendous feeling. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm sometimes far away from that. <laughs> I joke with my coach. I'm like, I sometimes would rather have a hybrid in my hand than an iron. Sometimes. Wow. Wow. <laughs> sometimes, as long as the greens aren't too. Sometimes it just depends on the day, but right. I suppose on occasion. <laughs> That that's that's cool though. I mean that's that's cool because I think yeah. there's a certain I don't know maybe uh, maybe not so much in the in the women's realm but in the men's realm I know there's a lot of players that should be playing more hybrids that maybe don't yeah. because of they don't like how they look or they you know don't think they want they want the traditional iron yeah. or whatever um, but that is it is cool to hear you say that because those hybrid clubs if you you know are confident in them they can perform for you so yeah. Um, I got to ask now too, as we kind of, I mean, obviously fantastic spring of golf. Um, what is kind of now and into the summer look like? Is there any, any competitive golf being played this summer or, you, or do you kind of take it easy until the fall season, you know, is upon us again, or how does that work for you? Yeah, for sure. I think one mentality I've had really since the beginning of golf career in high school and middle school and all of that is I just really prioritize breaks as well. And I've gotten better about it as I've gotten older. And I think, I think all competitive golfers or anyone in competitive sports really faces it. I mean, there's definitely a challenge you get through like mentally going day in day out and so sometimes giving yourself breaks is really needed and right now is definitely the time that I try to do that you know in the in the winter in the fall there's definitely that time too but I try to still keep going and keep working on swing changes because I feel like that's the time to do that whereas right now um I'm just taking kind of a full break and then I'll actually get back into it though fairly soon and I'm going to try to qualify for the USA in the summer. So really excited about that. And then um, soon after the fall season will be upon us, you know, that's, that starts like right away, September 2nd or something. So that's really exciting. And, um, you know, we always have, I'm really excited to start gearing up for that, but I do think breaks are necessary. And I think anyone in competitive sports can, can get that to some extent. Everyone's different, but that's definitely yeah. how it is so for me. When you say mention a break, like, are you, I mean, you're not going to a golf course at all or how, like, how, what, like, how far away from the game are you getting during these breaks? Is yeah, it like you're yeah. not, not watching any golf or are you, I mean, what level of uh, separation from the game are I you talking about? I never watch golf. Isn't that never crazy? Watch golf I never okay. watch golf. I don't even know if I watch the Masters. That's so bad. That's so bad. I feel, really? like, Interesting. feel like it's a golf okay. sin saying that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but I, um, yeah, no, right now I'm not even, I'm not even going to the golf course for a couple of weeks, okay. but, um, 
I feel like that'll allow me when I do go back to just be like super excited about it yeah. and mm-hmm. rejuvenated and not just kind of going in like half hard and all stuff. I'm going to be ready to go. So that's kind of why I do it. And also just like take some time to be with family. And um, I'm going to be watching my sister as sec- with sections oh, and say coming yeah. up. And so kind of being able to encourage her in that and be there for her. So all of those things I think are really important. And then that'll hopefully just allow me to be more excited once I do start golf again in a couple weeks. Yeah, yeah. It's uh it's been fun to kind of track and follow your career as it's progressed here cuz you know, like we mentioned, you've accomplished a heck of a lot in 2 years already. You've won, you know, you won that the Boilermaker Invitational which was last fall, I think. Yeah. Right? And then obviously now a Big 10 champion, played at Nationals twice. Um that resume is building pretty quickly for you. So <laughs> it's been fun you. to watch. Um, thank you for taking the time today. Oh, thanks um, this for has having been, me. This has been really fun and to, to catch up and hear your side of the story, I guess, from we've been following from afar, but to hear it kind of from you and, and uh, your success has been really cool. So, uh, Bella, we won't take any more of your time. I know it's uh, we had a little window to make this work, and we did. So uh, thank you for stopping by, sharing some of the stories. And, uh, of course, there will be more with Bella coming here throughout the summer. But um, otherwise, we'll let you go and continue with that break away from golf. This is probably as close to golf as you're going to get in these couple <laughs> weeks here. So. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. It's always wonderful being on. And, yeah, stay tuned for more golf content this summer.